Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'll be talking about a highly requested topic, which is snail protein. This video is for garden snails. It is not for giant African land snails or aquatic snails. This is just for plain old garden snails. Now, protein can be a pretty tricky topic and one that I've tried to learn how to approach with you guys because it depends highly on your species because there are different species. So in this video, I'll be talking about the average of what most garden snails need and what is kind of like the safe range to give them if maybe you don't know what kind of snail you have. But of course, it's always best to try to figure out what species you keep. So most garden snails are omnivorous, just like people, which means they cannot have a completely vegetarian diet and they also can't have a completely carnivorous diet. Don't get me wrong, there are some snails out there that are not omnivorous, but most garden snails are. Protein is very important for garden snails because it helps them live healthy lives and grow properly. Without protein, snails can't live a healthy life like they would in the wild, and since it is our job to give them healthy lives, it's very important to understand their protein needs. So again, protein needs do vary on species, for example, there are some snails that need a much higher protein intake, and there are some snails that need a very low protein intake. Once again, try your best to research which species you have so that you can properly identify how much they need the research. However, the general rule of thumb is about 40% a week. And this is where I always got confused. So I'll be kind of going over with you what this means. So when I say they need 40% a week, it means their protein intake should equal to 40%. Not of their diet, I know it's confusing, but I will be going over with you different protein options for your snails with their percentage so that you can kind of know. So for example, uh, mealworms are about 20% in protein. So if you give your snails just mealworms or something similar to mealworms that are low in protein, then they would need that protein source two times a week. But I'll be going over all of that. Those are just some examples to kind of get you to understand um, how to kind of calculate that. Also do remember that snails do get some protein from their regular fruits and vegetables that you feed them anyway. So if it doesn't completely equal to 40, it's not that big of a deal. They are still getting that protein just through their fruits and vegetables. So that being said, the general rule of thumb is anything up to 20% in protein should be given about two times a week. Anywhere between 20 and 40% should be given one time a week and anything above 40 can be given once a month. All right, and now I will be going over your protein options. A couple disclaimers before I actually dive into this because they are pretty important. One is that these are rough estimates. I honestly Googled protein percentages to give to you. I don't feed all of these options. But when you get a package of something, it'll almost always tell you the percentage like on the, um, what's it called? Like on the nutritional facts, it'll tell you the protein and probably either in percentages or grams. Disclaimer number two is that I have not given all these options. Some of them are controversial. So feed at your own risk, do your own research. These are just things that I found were super common. Third disclaimer is always check for any salt or added like minerals and stuff. You don't want to give snails any salt, obviously. So make sure you are checking uh, the ingredients to make sure that you are not giving your snails any salt. All right, so now that that is out of the way, let's go ahead and get into your options. So a popular option is snail mix. You can actually buy a snail protein mix that you just kind of rehydrate. This will vary in protein, so I'm not gonna give you a percentage because it kind of depends on where you get it. The vendor will tell you the protein percentage and will probably give you an estimate on how to feed it or when to feed it. Most of these are made for giant African land snails, so do watch out for that. Again, just ask for protein percentages and all of that. The only problem with snail mix is that we are limited here in the US on which vendors to get. Since most of these are made for giant African land snails, they obviously are not vendors in the US. So that is a problem I have run into. Another one that you guys have probably seen me use quite a bit and I recommend it a lot is old fashioned oats. So you just kind of want organic old fashioned oats. The only problem with them is that they are anywhere from 11 to 15%, so it's not a lot. If you do give oats, I recommend giving it with another protein source and definitely more than once a week. I like to give my oats with chia seeds, for example, and I usually give it twice a week. That's a pretty good option. My snails seem to like it a lot. Now, if you give oats, you're probably going to want to wet them um, to kind of soften them up. That is how most snails do like to eat them. 
Another one I've heard about that I actually never actually seen or used or anything like that are pond sticks. I, I think they're for fish, I'm not really sure. But pond sticks come in at about 28% in protein. So there's that option. I don't have much else to say because I've never used this option before. This one is something that you probably absolutely have in your house but is a bit controversial, but it's egg. So I've heard that you can feed egg raw or cooked, like hard boiled or scrambled. Obviously you don't want to cook it with any salt or anything like that, any additives. You just want it to be plain egg, no butter, oil, anything like that. I found a lot of different answers for egg, but I think it's around 13 to 15%. But again, just check that nutritional thing. Um, I don't really feed egg too often. I have in the past, it seemed fine. I think the controversy around cooked egg at least is that people say they can't digest it properly. I I have no idea. I haven't done a ton of research on egg, so I'm not a great source to talk about, but that is one of those things. Do your own research and, and come to your own conclusion. Another pretty big source of protein is shrimp, and I actually do want to try this with my snails soon. I haven't ever before, but I think it'd be really fun to try out. So you would want to get freshwater shrimp. Of course, you don't want it to be any additives. I know you can get it at the pet store, and I'm pretty sure that stuff is like 100% safe. I've heard of a lot of people using it, and I believe it comes in at about 20%. So again, one of those things that you would feed along with something else or feed twice a week, something like that. So one of my favorite things to feed for protein is blood worms. My snails go nuts over blood worms. Blood worms are something that you can get, again, at the pet store in your fish aisle. Um, I believe I get... <clears throat> I believe a lot of people get them frozen thawed. In that case, if your pet store has like a fridge freezer type of situation, they're probably in there. They are super high in protein at about 55%. And most people that used it said their snails go nuts over the stuff. So if you keep any kind of lizards or like amphibians, you probably have some feeder insects laying around the house and you can use some of those feeder insects to feed your snails protein. Now with any life feeders, I do recommend pre-killing them or at least pinching their heads first. A lot of people like to make them into a mash, you can do that too, but definitely pre-kill them. So number one is the common mealworm. So mealworms I've heard are actually pretty low in protein at about 20%, that is, you know, like live or freshly killed. So they would be given twice a week. I've heard that dry mealworms are actually higher in protein at about 43%. I could be wrong on that. I've never given dried mealworms before, but that's what I've heard from other keepers. Another one is waxworms. They come in at about 14%, so not a great source, but you can still use them if you have them laying around. For example, my toad had some waxworms and I had a couple extra, so I did give them to my snails, but it's definitely not like a high protein mix, not something I would go out of my way to feed them protein, but if you have them on hand, they can work. And then we go to the classic dubia roach. Dubia roaches come in at roughly 36% in protein, so definitely not a bad choice there. I would say with dubia roaches, you can give it to them one time a week and they'll be just fine. Now, other than bugs and oats and things, you can also give your snails seeds. It's an option that's growing in popularity and is used in a lot of snail mixes, but there's a variety of different seeds that your snails can eat to get their protein. Now, of course, with all of these seeds, you just want raw, unseasoned and seeds. Also try to make sure that these are organic since you don't want any like pesticides or anything on them. So a good one is pumpkin seeds. For pumpkin seeds I couldn't find a percentage but I did find they are 7 grams of protein but I couldn't seem to find a percentage so those are great and they are also natural dewormers. And then we also have sunflower seeds which are also natural dewormers. Sunflower seeds come in at about 30% in protein so definitely not a bad option. Once again you don't want roasted, you just want raw sunflower seeds with nothing else on them just sunflower seeds. Another option is chia seeds, which are about 19%. My snails really like these. And in my house, they just kind of lay around the house. So I just started buying organic so I could kind of share them with my snails. Then you have hemp seeds, which are about 20 to 25% in protein. So these are the biggest options that I would recommend for your snails protein and their percentages. I know that there are others and that I missed some, but those are just the ones that I found were most common in the snail community. Now that being said, there are a couple that are controversial that I tend to stay away from, but I'm not going to tell you, you have to stay away from them. One of these options are actually something that I used to feed quite a bit, and that is fish flakes. Now, if you do decide to feed fish flakes, you want to look on the ingredients and really pay close attention. You don't want to find any salt, onion, garlic, 
copper, magnesium, or any extra calcium in there. Um, and just like everything else, you'd wet it to feed it, of course, if you do choose to go that route. I choose to play it safe and do not even mess with them because I, I don't know, just... It's a little bit too risky for me, I think. But I know a ton of people still use fish flakes. One thing that some people do still use that I definitely wouldn't recommend, like even more so than fish flakes, and that would be cat or dog uh, kibble or biscuits or anything. They just have like a lot of stuff that's not great for snails in them. Especially in the US, we really don't regulate dog or cat food, so it's hard to say what's all in it, and it just isn't a very healthy option for snails, and it isn't a very safe option for snails. So I would just full on not recommend dog or cat food or like treats or anything like that. I just wouldn't really recommend it. Alright guys, well that is pretty much it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. This is a very highly requested video. And I was really unsure about doing it for a long time, but I'm really happy that I finally sat down and did it. Let me know if it was helpful down in the comments below. As always, give this video a like for the algorithm. Comment down below what you give your snails for protein, or if there's anything else that you want to learn about snails on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you're into this kind of content, or really any animal kind of content. I upload every single Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you can hit the bell if you don't or remember that. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram, the link will be down in the description below. And don't forget to follow my art Instagram account where I commission custom digital pet pictures. Link to that will also be in the description below, and as always, I will see you next time. Bye!